Example 6 is a very similar problem, but we have some rational functions that we're dealing with this time, and we're going to end up with some restricted values in our domain. In part A, we want to find m of n, so this means we would want to find the composition of m with our function n, meaning we want to evaluate that function m at 5 over x. This gives us our first point where we need to identify restricted values. Whatever our second function is, so whichever function we're plugging into the first function, we need to check any restricted values. So this tells us that regardless of what our resulting function is, x cannot be equal to 0. Substituting into our original function, we'll get 3 over 5 over x minus 2. And then what we'll do is multiply both the numerator and denominator by x over x to clear out those complex rational fractions and get a simpler statement to work with here. So this will give us 3x over 5 minus 2x. Or keep in mind if we wanted to we could rewrite this as the opposite of this fraction, this rational function, 3x over 2x plus 2x minus 5 by factoring that negative out of the denominator. This is our final resulting function from that composition, and we also need to check to make sure that that denominator can't be equal to zero. So this gives us the restricted value x cannot be equal to 5 halves. So this function composition has two restricted values, x can't be equal to zero, and x cannot be equal to 5 halves. So this gives us an example of how we verify any domain restrictions for a function composition f of g. What we want to do is find any restricted values. For 1, g of x, whichever function comes second or whichever function is being plugged into that first function, and then 2, the resulting function. This means we aren't worried about restricted values for the original function f, just that function that's being substituted into it, and whatever that resulting expression is. In part b, we want n of m. So this means we want to take our function n, evaluate it at 3 over x minus 2, which is going to give us 5 over 3 over x minus 2. We can multiply by the reciprocal of that expression in the denominator to rewrite this as 5 times x minus 2 over 3 or 5x minus 10 over 3. That's our resulting composition. We still need to check the denominator to see if there are any cases where that can be equal to 0, but we have no variable, so nothing we need to worry about there. 3 can never be equal to 0. So we only have a single domain restriction, which is that x cannot be equal to 2, since that would make that function m have a 0 in the denominator. If we look at taking the function m composed with itself, that means we would want to take m of 3 over x minus 2. So we get the domain restriction that x cannot be equal to 2. And we start off by establishing the function 3 over 3 over x minus 2 minus 2 which we can multiply by x minus 2 over x minus 2 to simplify our rational function. So we'll get 3 times the quantity x minus 2 over 3 minus 2 times the quantity x minus 2. And then we'll distribute through to get 3x minus 6 over 3 minus 2x plus 4 or 3x minus 6 over negative 2x plus 1, or negative 2x minus 1. 
let's say actually no, that should be plus 7 from the 4 plus 3. Or if we were to factor that negative out of the denominator, we would have the opposite of the rational function 3x minus 6. over 2x minus 7. Either way, we can look at that denominator, set equal to 0, or more specifically say that we want that denominator to never be equal to 0, which would give us x cannot be equal to 7 halves. So we get two restricted values. In this case, x cannot be equal to 2 or 7 halves. In part d, we want to take the function n composed with itself. So this would be n of 5 over x, which would be 5 over 5 over x. Multiplying by the reciprocal would give us 5 over 1 times x over 5, or just x. In this case, our resulting function has no restricted values, but when we plugged in 5 over x, we do get the restricted value that x cannot be equal to 0, so we get that one restricted value in our domain.